Yeah, so tell us more about language. <clears throat> well, I can say that uh, language has had the effect of really being able to express some of the subtleties of the human spirit. Um, maybe it is, they're very predictable. Maybe just the combination of taste buds and smelling and vocal cords and uh, sight and hearing. Maybe they are... Uh, they're all just the same variations of different of they're, they're ve different variations of the same, you know, of, of frequencies. Uh, so, if I can interrupt you, okay. one of the things I don't understand is what do you mean by grammar of spirituality? How does this come? Grammar spirituality. Well, the idea of it's a little bit cynical. I'm saying it in a little bit of cynic, a cynical way that the Hebrew Bible has a very interesting way of when it it presents the grammar of the word, and then it uses it conjugates the verb. It takes the word, the basic name, and then it changes it to that it look it is a, a, it is an active verb or a passive verb or a and half active, half it is to itself, it is in, to infinity. It, it, the verb can be changed in seven different ways in Hebrew grammar. So it almost like poses its variations, how the verb can move. But it is not, it is the way it can move psychologically or almost like psycho spiritually. Is the verb, does it refer to yourself? Are you, if they like, say the word to work, are you working? Are you making somebody else work? Are you being worked? Um, I, are you a, are you, uh, are you working on yourself in improvement? So what's are spiritual you, about it? So it is that there are different psychological conditions which are exercises, like almost like mental exercises, exercises of its of its being. The verb as a being is being exercised in many different ways. And just as we as in our intellectual beings are can be exercised in in, in different ways. So the if language is in truly such a creative process and it does reflect all the conditions and nuances it is an incredible instrument. It's uh, it's very complex. Uh, it would be it would be too too difficult to even try to imagine in a happy world to work out. And possibly now with artificial intelligence, these the the incredible task of de de uh, coding what words mean towards you know, input and how, how it all happens. I mean, it's going to be an incredible journey. Uh, uh, so language is obviously going to also change, uh, no doubt. I don't know if we can ever get rid of our biological language, one that we've, our mother tongue, but, uh, but no doubt language. I, I think, though, that the genuineness between humans uh, may be... It will be interesting to know how what happens to vocal language. Uh, because we will also ma mainly... We mo mainly our, our communication may be by tape, digitally. We may send recordings by tape. So the true digital recording may take place only amongst people who are with each other and they, they're hearing, they can actually hear. It might become very rare just as being people being side by side, side is getting rarer. And so linguistics. what do you mean with that? Theo-linguistics. Well, when we create, when language 
language is an entire system which draws and it's not just one part but it's it reflects an entire worldview and uh, it's a continuity and it's a uh, so and within it are depicted are anchored in it many basic uh, persuasions um, when you speak in a certain way, it means that you will be you're open. When you inflections, that means that you, you when you ask questions, it means you want to. So, uh, theo linguistics, I suppose, is the is the creative. And social and legal and psychic uh, and linguist uh, linguistic uh, pi pillars of of our consciousness.